these football players, they're student athletes, right? Student first, athlete second. It's, it's impressive to see these young men and women qualify and order that Aggie ring. The game can change people's lives, you know, just like picking up a football can bring you a lot of opportunities you can never imagine. The snap and the hold are good. Is it going to get there? He got a hand on it, I think. Nope. Ole Miss wins. It's a beautiful Saturday here at Kyle Field. Oh, it's out of field is today, man. D-line, we in the backfield all day. Click, click, boom! Johnny, Johnny, I'll get right, you hooked right. up. Have you uh, sit down? Cheers. Slide. Um, we'll just run this up through your shirt. Uh, Puts it to me to where I can see everything, you know, and just be able to focus on my assignment. And now I can just be myself and just play ball. The nation is taking notice of the play of linebacker Edger and Cooper. The Aggies are well aware of the season he's put forth what he means to this team. Coop is the craziest athlete I've ever seen play the sport of football. Um, the season that he's had is incredible. And it's everything that, um, you know, me looking from the outside in, I feel like the potential. You know, last year, you know, I was in, I was in the linebacker room, so I kind of got to know him uh, more deeply. And I, I see this kid that is crazy talented, explosive, and instinctual, and just understands the game. This year he has 100% um, you know, taken that, this opportunity that he's um, come across and just made the most out of it. He's been in the right spot, he's making plays, and uh, I think the world's finally uh, starting to realize who Cooper is. Pretty spectacular. Um, he's been very productive, he's been consistent. I think he's been a leader on the field for us, leader by example. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm so proud of him to just see the development of his game. I, he's worked really hard throughout the entire offseason to put himself in position to do this. So going into the season, you, you felt like he was going to play well. You, you know he's extremely talented and he put the work in. But then, you know, to see it actually come to fruition on the field and, and all the production, the numbers, and, and what he's doing to help his team is pretty amazing. A great season. I mean, he's having a season a lot of us dreamed of as kids, saying I wanna, I'm going to be like this person or that person or I'm going to do something special. He's having that season, and God bless the Coop and everything he's been doing. He's been playing great, and I mean, I've been having fun playing alongside of him. I'm very proud of him. Like, we came in together, so I've seen it from day one. You know, like, Coop played early, and it's, and it's starting to show, like, everything that he learned from the beginning, of, and, and the experience is kicking in now. Like, a lot of mistakes that he was making before, he's not really making no mistakes. So he's, I'm proud of him that he's playing this style of football right now. Coop's been doing amazing things, and this is things that he's been building up to over the years, and he's just becoming the player that everybody knew he could become. Um, he, he's doing a great job. He's doing his job and he's doing it to the best of his ability and he's crushing other opponents. Um, and, and all that speed and stuff like that, we've been seeing that since his freshman year, but now it's just his game just been getting better and better every year and now you all seeing the final product. This is a school that's produced some legendary linebackers. The season Coop is having compares to some of the very best. His 2023 stacks up with that of the Dat Wins and the Vaughn Millers of the past. And like those legends, postseason accolades could come his way too. Most definitely he's earned it. And the best part about it is he don't even talk about that type of stuff. He just go back to work every day and then get better every day. That's that's what he does. Coop is not a big talker. He just does. Um, and, and, he, and he's humble. He, and then you see that with his actions. And you love players like that because they um, they just go to just go to work every day and they just pick everybody else up around them by, the, by what they're doing by how they're moving, by the uh, the impact that they bring. He's the best linebacker in the country, in my opinion. You know, like, even like one of the defensive players, if you talk about that, he's the top defensive player in the country. So he deserves all that, you know. Even though he's not thinking about it, he deserves all that and let it, everything that's coming his way. 
The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M athletics. This Saturday is Military Appreciation Day. Any day is a great one to say thank you to those that serve this country. For some Aggie players, it's personal. My pops was a retired Marine. He served 21 years, a first sergeant. As far as that growing up, it's a lot of discipline. It's waking up early. It's you're kind of a little Marine for, um, you know, whenever your childhood, so. But also on the other side of that, I, you know, you get to move around, you have the pleasure of moving around to all these different locations, and while it might be tough for you know, me or a kid to kind of make friends and grow through that development, I grew super close to my family, my siblings. Uh, it's just been a great journey that I feel like has really forged a family that I'm really proud to be a part of. My dad was in the Air Force, and then my grandpa was also in the Air Force, and then I have had multiple aunts and uncles that have also been in the military. My dad made a lot of sacrifices, um, and you know, as a kid, you kind of don't see those sacrifices. You just kind of see like a hero and, and someone that, you know, like, oh, my dad represents this country. He's fought for our country. Like, you see that, but as, as I grew up, I was like, all these different things that the military enforces on, on families and on him, I had so much respect for it because he, he sacrificed so many different things, like family time. Um, he, got, he was deployed, so I mean, he, he obviously was away from me and my mom and, and my sister, and that really had an impact on us, but he still kept pushing through, and he stayed strong and resilient, and our family just bonded together closer after that. And the ties this school has to the military are significant. The sacrifice many have made has never been lost on the 12th man. I mean, you see it every day around campus. You see um, the cadets walking around in their uniforms, and you, you know, Every single game, um, Saturday, you see, I mean, they stand out on their own. They end up, of course, standing there, the band that takes the field, they crush it, and you can't help but notice it. I mean, if you come to Kyle Field, you're, you're gonna be, you know, exposed to that kind of aspect of our, you know, the traditions that we stand for here. You know, part of the reason that I take so much pride in being the 12th man is just being able to kind of represent that while knowing that, you know, I have my own background being raised as a Marine Corps kid. I think with my background and AM's background of like the military, I think it definitely makes me more prideful in both our school and my family and it connects the, connects the two. Um, our rich, we have rich history at a and obviously, and I think that is really cool that we get to, we, we get to kind of merge those, like being a part of a military family and then obviously the family here at a and football and military appreciation day but it's the bulldogs who fire the opening salvo they strike immediately 
so a quick response is needed. It's a keep by Henderson, rolls around the left side to the 25, to the 30, puts his head down. He's going to roll to the left, throws on the run, complete Noah Thomas midfield, 45-40, steps inside the numbers and tackled ahead to the 35-yard line. Good start for Jalen Henderson at quarterback. Looking left, throwing left, complete, inside the 20. Noah Thomas with his second catch on this drive. He still absorbs two hits. Henderson's going to run, tuck right up the middle. 15, 10, 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Jalen Henderson. His first as an Aggie in his first starts. Quarterback draw right up the middle. Good blocking by that O-line. And Jalen Henderson did the rest. Do it like that. Do it like that. Movement too early by Mississippi State. Yeah, this cost them five. They moved again. That offensive line. Default start. Offense. Number 98. Trips left, single receiver right. Quick movement again. Don't tell me the 12th man doesn't make a difference. Parsons sidearm sling intercepted almost. Deuce Harmon. He got Did it. he get it? He got it by Deuce. It's the second of his career. He went down and dug this one out. The ball was thrown short of the receiver. He dug it out. Short field. Can the Aggies take advantage? Hands off. Right up the middle. Ruben Owens inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Keeper by Henderson. Pitch to Anias on the option right side. Ruben Owens. Aggie sideline. 10, 5. Owens dragging that pile near the pylon. He's just shy. Amari Daniels over the goal line for a touchdown from a yard out. Touchdown, Aggies. Seth Davis left side, and he's hit a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Cooper with the tackle. Quick snap. Parson throws left side. Knocked away by... Chappelle intercepted by Jacoby Matthews on the ricochet at the 15-yard line. Hey, that's good teamwork. Way to go, guys. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes. 33-yard attempt for Randy Bond. This is inside the left hash. The kick is good. Now in motion from left to right, Xavier Thomas. It's a jet sweep to him around the right side. Cooper is there to knock him out of bounds. Third and one from their own 34. Fakes the pitch up the middle. Dragged it backwards it. by Cooper. He was hit by Jared Kerr. And he is shy of the first down by half a yard. And let's see what they'll do here on fourth down. Fourth and the nose of a football way. Two-yard attempt. Kind of stuttered on that kick. Far and enough. Boots it through. 52, matching his career high. The Aggies seem in control. Bulldogs are hanging around. A&M looks to leave them behind. It's Amari Daniels behind Jalen Henderson. And Amari takes off at the 40-yard line. 45, midfield, down the Aggie sideline. 45, 30, before he's knocked out of bounds. Jalen looks left, throws left. Oh, he goes up and gets it. Anaya Smith to the 19-yard line. I get to say this again. He is magic. Pressure right up the middle, middle screen. Anaya Smith at the 10, the 5. That's a touchdown. It's a screen to the left, and it's Max Wright, the tight end screen. Breaks the tackle to the 45. Drags it to Fender. Jalen Henderson in the pocket, steps up. He's going to run. He's got a nice Smith in front blocking. First down inside the 30. Henderson in the pocket. Flush to his left. Rolls. Gets around the left side. Down the left sideline. Jalen Henderson. It's a touchdown. Jalen Henderson. 34-10 at Texas A&M leads Mississippi State. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. The defense answers the bell coming out of the locker room. They ring in the second half with some big plays. 
Jared Kerr with the sack. Shamar Stewart picks up the loose ball. And the Aggies score a touchdown. A no defensive flag. touchdown. No flag. Send the nickel. Sack by Wrights. Kerr forces the fumble. Shamar Stewart rubbles it in. And the Aggies have a 40-10 lead. Wright takes a shot to the end zone left side. Overthrows it. Jalen Henderson has made a heck of a start in his Aggie debut. Now it's time to close strong. And facing a third and 13 from the 37-yard line with two backs. He's got Anias at the 37-yard line, spins after the catch, the catch and the curl to the 36. Roll to the left, now throw for Noah Thomas coming back. It's, be interference. it's interference on Sean Preston Jr. Empty backfield, shotgun snap. Jalen Henderson slings. Touchdown, Janae Walker. He caught it right in the middle of the end zone. <laughs> He's doing a little dance. He's got his teammates doing a dance with him. <laughs> I love it. 47-10, Texas A&M. This is a bullet from Jalen Henderson. And he had to thread the needle, and it was right on target. <laughs> Second and 16 for the 25. Go route, right side. Double coverage, intercepted. Damani Richardson. Oh, it hit the turf. Oh, it did hit the turf. As it landed. Made by the M in that end zone. I thought it was going to be a fourth pick by a fourth different defensive yep. back. Two receivers each side. Shotgun snap. Parson running for his life. And Coop. he's down. Shamar Turner cleaned up by Cooper. Coop had spy on him, and he got out there really well. It's now, now going to be fourth down and about half an acre. 39-yard line is where the ball will be put down. Ferry, a 49-yard attempt. Right hash, the left-footed kicker. Line drives. Not going to get there. And I wonder if the Aggie got a piece of it. They may have gotten a hand on it or a fingernail. We've seen that play before. It remains 48-10, Texas A&M. Jalen Henderson, Bailey, a lot of room, 50, 45, 40, still on his feet to the 38-yard line. The 19-yard gain by David Bailey. 30, 25 to the 24, 14-yard gain. Just chunks of yards by David Bailey Jr. Randy Bond connects from long range to close the night. It's a rousing 51 to 10 win for the Aggies. Wait for it, wait for it. Another good one. You gotta keep it going, man. Finish the right way. You know what we do, man. Look at the scoreboard, man. Defense just put on the clinic. All right, guys. Hey, listen, listen. Right, first of all, congratulations. Great win. Great team win. All three phases had an effect on the game. We started out, now special teams, we didn't do real good. And we picked it up and got it going. Can't have that, guys. That can't happen again. That cannot happen again. That, that, that can't happen. But offensively, defensively, great answer offensively. Defensively, very, very strong. Got, got that going. Offense kept scoring, but defense created turnovers tonight. That was huge. Scored on a turnover. That's huge. Got pressure on the quarterback. Played the run game very well. Offensively, did a really good job of balancing the run game and the pass game, picking up third down. Jalen, outstanding job. Your first start ever. Oh. Oh. Score 50 points and no turnovers. Two touchdowns, ran two and threw two. And that was excellent. We ran the ball good. Offensive line did a great job picking up blitzes, communicating. Got and played in rhythm all night. And then the second half after that first one debacle coming out, the first drive, we didn't score. But you put them away. You didn't give them hope to get back in the game. You know what I'm saying? It was a great, it was a great team effort. Great job. Now, Got to get ready for next. So that does make you bowl, uh, bowl eligible. We're going to bowl game now. Got to put you that. Now we got to get that. Just add to that bowl game. We got to get better. Practice next week. Have a great week and go play right here and play the last. Be the last senior, last home game here. We need to play well, prepare well all week. Send these seniors out the right way and what we're doing and, and make this season finish it up strong so we can go into the next year and do the things we got to do. All right. Hey, one, two, three. Hey. Jimbo Fisher.
Fisher is out as the head football coach at Texas A&M, even after a big blowout win on Saturday. Texas A&M is in the process of parting ways with Jimbo Fisher. Reported first by TexAgs.com, Jimbo Fisher officially fired. Texas A&M handled this decision as effectively as you could once you've made the decision. I don't really think most of the country realizes how twofold significant this is. This is a bombshell about as big as it gets in college football. The excitement of a win on Saturday night faded away in the morning light. Less than 24 hours after the final snap, Jimbo Fisher had been dismissed as Texas A&M's head coach. Earlier last week, I recommended to my boss, interim president, Mark Welsh, and both of us then recommended to Chancellor John Sharp that a change was absolutely necessary. The assessment that I delivered was that we are not reaching our full potential. We are not in the championship conversation and something was not quite right about our direction and the plan. Based on my experience, the best programs have confidence. The program has an established identity the program maximizes the talent. The leadership is fully integrated in the university, the athletics program, and its culture. I did not feel like we were meeting those standards of excellence and leadership. The Aggies sent shockwaves through college football on Sunday, but there's still two Saturdays and a bowl game remaining. Athletics director Ross Bjork named defensive line coach Elijah Robinson as the interim head coach, and trusting him to lead this group of players the rest of the way. I've been impressed with them really all year about their maturity. I mean, this is a mature and kind of resilient group, and we've had some adversity, obviously. So in some ways, it wasn't necessarily surprising that they reacted the way they did. And that's why Elijah was so important, is I wanted somebody that they could gravitate towards. And so he's the perfect choice for it. Their reaction was awesome. They gave him a standing ovation. They all came up and hugged him afterwards. So to me, that was a great sign that, yes, this hurts. Yes, this is hard. But we got two games. We have a bowl game. Let's keep everybody together, and let's build this you know, for the future of Aggie football. I've been here for five years. Aggie land is special. The ingredients for a championship are here. Aggies want to do it the right way and deserve excellence in everything that we do. We appreciate the full support of the 12th man, former students, 12th man foundation donors, anyone who supports Texas A&M and Aggies everywhere. Onward we go.